Solar Storms by Linda Hogan, Chapter 14 It was a raw and scarred place, a land that had learned to survive, even to thrive on harshness. At first it seemed barren to me, the trees so thin and spindly, the soil impoverished, but soon I felt sympathy with this ragtag world as seemingly desolate, outlying places and villages. It was a place of rocks and mosses. Water ran all across the earth's surface in every way it could. It rivulets and bogs, ponds and streams, all of it on its way to a river where it would roar away to another America or to empty into a bay. I understood this water to be the source of origin of all land. I saw the land in its fullness, even the trees that had been twisted by wind and dwarfed in poor soil. Everything had become strengthening by desperate and hungry needs and by the tracks of running water. Like me, it was native land and it had to survive. And in time, it would be angry land. It would try to put out an end to the plans of dams and drowned rivers. An ice jam at the real river would break loose and rage over the ground, tearing out dams and bridges, the constriction all broken by the blue, cold roaring of ice no one was able to control. Then would come a flood of unplanned proportions that would suddenly rise up as high as the steering wheels of their machines. The Indian people would be happy with the damage, with the fact that water would do what it wanted and in its own way. What water didn't accomplish, they would.